I've gone ahead and downloaded the latest available version of KiCad at the time I'm recording this, which is 8.0.3, and uh, started it up. In this lecture, I want to show you an example project and use that as an opportunity to browse and to become familiar with some of the most important applications in the KiCad application family. So we are going to have a look inside the schematic editor and the PCB editor in particular. For this, I have gone over to the KiCad repository on GitLab and you'll see here there is a directory called demos and in this directory there's a bunch of very interesting projects that you can also download and play with. You can download those projects from the repository directly by clicking on this blue button here and then selecting one of the options that you want. I went for the zip file. The repository with the demos is also part of the downloadable packages. So if you have installed, for example, the latest 64-bit version of the KiCad installation binary, or Mac OS or Linux for that matter, then uh, most likely uh, the demo folder is already on your computer. You can check it out. Uh, but just in case it hasn't downloaded or is not part of the package that you installed, just remember you can always go to GitLab and uh, download the uh, entire demo repository. So I've done that and you can see it right here. I've expanded it from uh, the zip file, copied it into my projects directory so I can have access to it and uh, here it is in here this is the entire KiCad repository actually so in here you'll see the demos folder which is this so I'm just going to have a look at one of these projects that I really like because it's, it sits off kind of in the middle between being very complex and not too simple and so it gives us a good overview of what KiCad is capable of so the project that I'm going to show you is the pick programmer this project right here so i'm just going to double click and go in the project and you can see the main kickout files so kickout underscore pro this file right here contains the project information we got the kickout underscore pcb which contains the layout information or the pcb information and then the kickout underscore sch which contains the schematic information you can actually open each one of those individually and uh, for example let's see i'll do the schematic open with ee schema so this is just going to pick the EE schema app from the KiCad family of applications or collection of applications and just open this up outside of a project. So that is an option that you have, but uh, what I prefer to do is to open the project as a whole. So here's KiCad. Again, there's a few different ways by which you can do that. For example, you can right click, get the context menu and open this underscore profile underscore profile for project with KiCad or since I've got KiCad open I will just drag and drop so drag and drop the underscore profile in the KiCad main window and that will open up the project so you can see the three files underscore sch underscore pcb and underscore pro now the nice thing about these files is that they are simple text files so for example if I take my Atom text editor and I drag and drop one of these files across, you'll see that they're totally readable. You can just open them up in your text editor, have a look inside, even use a programming language to access the data in these files programmatically. They're all text files. And we'll be using this advantage a little bit later on in this course when I show you how to do versioning of your KiCad projects using Git. Just a short interruption to let you know that this video is part of my comprehensive KiCad course that will teach you every aspect of creating printed circuit boards with KiCad from scratch. Go to the course page to learn more about it if you want. Find the link to the course page in the description below and treat yourself with a discount coupon for my YouTube viewers. Okay, let's continue with the video. All right, so put that aside. Uh, so let's start our exploration with the schematic editor and uh, to access the schematic editor and to open it up just click on either this button here once or double click on the file and it will get you to the schematic editor which is this. 
Sometimes we also refer to the schematic editor as EE schema, but uh, I'll try to be consistent and just say schematic editor when I am referring to this tool here, just to be consistent with the key and terminology. So as you can see, it's pretty uh, straightforward as a user interface. We've got tools across the sides and down the bottom we've got our status. You can use your mouse to navigate the sheet. I'm using the scroll wheel right now. So just um, if you're curious, I'm using a Logitech MX Master 3S. The nice thing about this mouse is that it's got a scroll wheel, which is also a button. And that allows me to do things such as use a scroller to zoom in and out or press the button with the scroller and pan left, right, up, down. And the uh, scroller also uh, works while I've got it pressed. I can still zoom in and out. So there's things like that that make this mouse really good. And of course, the accuracy uh, is quite uh, impressive. Uh, it allows me to do fine work both in the schematic editor and the PCB editor. You don't need, of course, to have a Logitech uh, MX Master Mouse, but uh, the, the middle scroll button is important. So uh, I do recommend that you get something similar. All right, so you can see a lot of interesting and uh, most likely uh, recognizable components. There's transistors, resistors, amplifiers, uh, diodes, etc. Uh, these green lines, of course, are wires. Uh, there's junctions, uh, and all of these components are pretty interesting. Uh, and just to see how this schematic is put together, uh, the various labels that are being used. If you click on any of those symbols, you bring up its properties. I'll do that again because I clicked on the text itself. I want to click on the symbol itself. You can see that the whole symbol is highlighted along with its text values and other attributes. So double click on it and it will bring up the symbol properties. And you can see the properties for this particular symbol and some of its parameters. So here's an association with a footprint uh, which we'll be able to see and inspect in the PCB editor, its value, its uh, unique identifier, like the reference identifier, and so on. You can and use the checkboxes here to enable or disable specific features, such as whether a particular piece of text, for example, the footprint right here, you can see is marked as show, and that's why we see the, the name or I should say the uh, the footprint value appearing here in the schematic. If things get a bit busy, you can choose to disable that. So it's not visible and it just cleans up the diagram a little bit more, the, the schematic. And another interesting thing that I want to point out here is this. So if you double click on this box, it will take you to another sheet that is also part of the same schematic. And if you click on this button right here, the bottom of the left toolbar, bring that up, you see that you've got the schematic hierarchy, which allows you to navigate the two sheets. And of course, you can have more than two sheets, you can have an unlimited number of sheets. But that means that your schematic, if it's above a certain size, that it doesn't comfortably fit inside a single sheet, you can break it up into multiple sheets. Another nice thing is if you click on this button right here, the Properties Manager, it brings up this pane on the left side. And as you click on Symbols, you see the properties appearing there. So there's a quick way to see the properties of a symbol without having to double click and have a look inside. So this is something new in KiCad 8, uh, just to boost productivity just a little bit more. I'm going to close that and um, Let's continue with the PCB editor. So when you complete work on your schematic and you're ready to start actually creating the PCB in its physical form, we can go to the PCB editor. You can access the PCB editor by clicking on this button right here on the top toolbar, or alternatively by clicking on this button in the main KiCad window or double clicking on the file name here. Since I've got the schematic editor open, I'm just going to click on the PCB editor button on the top toolbar, and that will bring me to the PCB editor. There you go. 
So this is where you do the actual work for creating the physical PCB, the one that you will be sending to the PCB manufacturer to manufacture, to create, so that you can then populate it with the electronic components. So again, very similar interface. If you can put these two side by side, you'll see that they have a, a top toolbar, side toolbar and panes with, in this case, an appearance pane uh, right here. I'll come back to that in a moment. And a left uh, toolbar on the left side, plus your statuses down the bottom. So similar interface. Again, I'm, I'm using my mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and out, press on the scroll wheel to pan, change the viewport, and the right click allows you access to the context menu. On the right side, we've got the appearance pane, which allows you to turn things on and off like that and reduce a busy PCB into something that is more manageable. I'm going to go into a lot of detail about what every single one of those buttons does later on in this course, but this is just a quick overview with some of the most important features. Now, if you need more space to draw, you can just turn that off. You can remove the appearance pane by just clicking on this button down the bottom. And uh, there's also a properties manager that you can open on the left side. And as you click on symbols, you can see that information about those symbols appears on the left side again. So I'll turn that off. There's also presets. Because there's so many options here that you can turn on and off, once you have an option that you like, you can save it as a preset and then quickly enable it or disable it or switch between presets. So that's a, a very convenient and time saving feature that I use a lot. And down here, there's a selection filter. Again, there's so many components here. I'm just going to switch off uh, the copper layer and actually put on all layers or turn on all layers. You can see there's quite a lot of things in here and a lot of uh, items that are overlapping other items. So to help you with your targeting is where you click is what you actually want to select. You can use a selection filter. So for example, if I only want to work with footprints, I disable everything else, I enable footprints, and now when I click on something that contains a footprint, only the footprint is selected instead of other things such as, for example, traces. So I'm clicking on this trace here and it's not selectable because it's not in uh, selected in my filters. But if I wanted to work with tracks or traces and I enable that option, and now you can see that it's selectable. All right, I'm, I'm just going to undo a couple of times. Everything that you see here is configurable. For example, the size of this width is configurable. I can change it and make it much thicker, for example if I have a good reason to do so, but it is possible. I can change positions if I can select an item like this just by dragging it. I can also use a dragging option that doesn't break the traces, but you can see if there's a conflict with adjacent components or traces, KiCad will highlight that. So I'll hit escape to go back and actually will undo that size change for the trace. So everything is configurable, even things such as the size of a um, pad. Let's go into a hole, actually. Let's say, for example, this hole, which is used as a mounting hole. I, I can change that as well. Its position, its size, and so on. Uh, another interesting thing here is the 3D viewer. This is a feature that I enjoy, especially as my project nearest completion, I like to have a look at what the project will look like in real life. So I can bring up the 3D viewer and get a very realistic uh, view of what the final populated PCB will look like. Before I finish, I just want to show you one more interesting feature that shows the integration between the schematic editor and the PCB editor in KiCad. So for example, let's say that I click on this component here, C1, I'll just zoom in. You can see that the schematic editor 
moved the viewport to focus on that selected component. If I click on U4, same thing happens. Here's R16 and so on. And of course the opposite is possible too. If I click on this coil, you can see that KiCad PCB editor moves. Here's the diode, the capacitor, and so on. So that shows quite tight level of integration between the editors, uh, the schematic, and the PCB editor. So I'll stop this example here. I just wanted to quickly show you what the schematic and the PCB editors look like and some of the basic principles or basic techniques for using them. Uh, I do recommend that you spend more time with these examples. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, there's quite a few examples here that are worth taking a few minutes to play with, even if you've never used KiCad before, because browsing is so easy and you can learn a lot from those examples. I also wanted to mention that on the KiCad website, there's a page made with KiCad. You can see the URL up here and that gives you a really good overview of very interesting projects that were done on KiCad. Some of those projects are really impressive in, in terms of their complexity and um, the in integration and uh, the design qualities of these projects. And that gives you a good feel of what KiCad is capable of doing. Uh, it can go far beyond the relatively simple projects that you'll see in this course, because this course has to focus on the needs of a typically beginner and intermediate level uh, designers and, and users. But just be aware that this is simply the, the beginning. KiCad has been used in very, very complicated and um, uh, high density projects and to give you a better understanding of what those are and of course what the KiCad capabilities are just take a few minutes to browse these projects and learn more about what other people have done with KiCad. <music>